OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, hi everybody. So it's gonna be very interactive today. So like every two, three slides, you'll see I'm gonna ask questions. So get ready to type and share. Uh, it's yeah, I'm trying to make it as interactive as I can with this setup. So the session is on getting started with computers. Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you this is an in-person class because we had um, some major problems with our demographics. We have students, a lot of students, who have never turned a computer on, who don't know how to use a mouse, who don't know how to double click. So those aren't things you could teach them online. We found that the best way was for them to come on campus in small groups and do this with us online. So that's what this presentation is gonna cover. We've already done three sessions like this since November and we're going on the fourth one in one week. We just finished our last one. Um, so basically what you're gonna get out of the session today is it's like a hands-on computer class. It's only five times, it's a workshop setup and it helps students with level gains. I'll talk about that. I'm gonna tell you how it leads to their success and our success. So I just want to tell you a little bit about me. I used to think that no one cared, but they do. Like people always want to know who it is that, you know, speaks and presents. So I'm, uh, we actually immigrated to the United States in 1989 from Armenia because it was part of Soviet Union and we were trying to get away from communism. And then we came to the US. Um, I did pretty well with schooling. I went to Cal State LA, got my bachelor's degree from there. Uh, I worked in the uh, public, I'm sorry, private sector. I was doing like accounting, financial insurance stuff uh, right out of college. And I even had my own small business, which still exists, but very, very small scale. But ultimately I found that it wasn't for me. So I ended up applying for jobs specifically at public schools. I got a clerical job. I was a clerk typist. Then I became secretary and then a bookkeeper at Fontana High School. And then I decided that I had a really good thing going with high school students. So I got my teaching credentials and then I became a teacher. So by day I was teaching high school math at the high school. And then in the evenings I was coming to adult school and I was teaching adult school classes, which is why when we had an opening for an assistant principal position, since I had my admin credentials at that time, I went ahead and applied. So it's been three years that I've been assistant principal here at the adult school. And that's my family. I have two young children and my husband and I have been married about 17 years. It'll be 17 years coming up soon. Uh, that's me teaching to uh, a GED students, GED math. And then I actually won a big award when I was a teacher, high school math teacher. So that's the picture you see with our superintendent and uh, the county superintendent. And that was a big honor for me. I'm really proud of that moment. Uh, Rosanna? So, yes, ma'am. We do have one question in the chat that just says, did you do this online or in person? In person, all in person. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Fon so at Fontana Adult School, our biggest program is ESL. Majority of our students are here for, to learn English. And as soon as we get them in, we try to have them go into the GED program, maybe the diploma program, citizenship. Uh, our CTE programs are office occupations, interpreter, translator, paraprofessional. Uh, cottage foods is like when they make foods at home and then they sell them. And the medical classes, pharmacy tech, medical assistant. So a couple of fun facts. So this is where you get to share. If any of these apply to you, then if you could just say, yeah, me too, say something in the chat, I'd appreciate it. So I'm left-handed, but I guess my parents said that it wasn't proper to be left-handed. I don't know if it's a Soviet Union thing, I don't know. So they taught me to try to do as much as I can with the right. It didn't work except writing. I write with the right, but I do everything else with the left. Um, I have not dyed my hair. This is my natural hair. I'm waiting for it to go gray until I do it. I bite my nails like crazy. I've done it ever since I was young. So if you bite your nails, put something in the chat so we could connect. I love Seinfeld. I like, uh, well, I love, I love Lucy. In fact, my daughter is named Lucy because of I love Lucy. I love watching The Office. 
And I have a website that's called efficiencyandorganization.com where I put how like you could be more efficient in life and stuff. And I'm seeing some chats. Let's see what people are saying. I'm, so this is the part, Holly, what are they saying? Are people- Okay, listening? so what we have is the, uh, the South also does the left-hand thing. Ooh. We have, Rosanna, we are twins separated at birth. <gasps> I like Seinfeld, me too with the left-handed. I love Lucy. Oh, good. I don't use hair dye anymore. Love Seinfeld and I love Lucy. I love Seinfeld in the office. I like Seinfeld. Well, love and hair dye. Really bright for COVID and former nail biter. Former. I don't know how they did it. They're horrible. <laughs> I get them done because of that. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some uh, questions. If you are an administrator or if you're not in the classroom, like let's say you work for a company and stuff, if you could show a reaction, I just want to gauge to see who's like what, you know, in the in the group, because we have 28 right now. So I'm just trying to see who's what. So if you go to the reaction and put it, I think this is something I could actually see. Oh, good. I found one person. Okay. Second person. Third. Okay. Now, if you work at a school site, can you react? Because this is probably, okay. Okay, I see some thumbs ups, okay. And then if students, are students allowed to come back? As far as you know, I know things are changing rapidly, especially with the law that was passed. Um, if they are, are students allowed to come back to your school site? Do you know, yes or no? So if you wanna do thumbs up or some kind of a reaction. Oh good, some people are typing too. Yes, in the chat we have starting to come back case by case and then for one-on-one -on -one testing and for testing only. Okay. And then now we have out of the classroom, but not an administrator working with all programs. Um, Yes, and for enrollment and testing, for testing only. So it looks like they're coming back. One says we're going to be face-to-face -face in April. Yeah, which is like right around the corner. Okay. All right. So here's the thing with us. The testing, I'm glad that that came up. Our CASAS testing, we've been doing in person since May. So our district said if I submit like a step-by-step -step protocol and convince them that it's going to be safe, they would let us do it. So since May, we've been doing it. We have a room that's really big and we measured with the tape measure to make sure like we wanted to see the square footage and we learned that from Corona Norco actually, they're the ones who taught us how to do this. Um, we even though the room could fit like 48 people, we only do 14. That's how spread out it is. So since that was kind of like a trial for us, we saw, oh, okay, it's working. Nobody's really getting sick. Upon walking in, we're checking temperature. We're giving them a wipe. So they have to go and wipe their station. We do it where in between sessions, we schedule the appointments. So that way when they come in, like the custodian has enough time to go clean. But even then, see, it's all about like them feeling that it's safe. They don't see the custodian cleaning, right? So what we do is we give them a wipe upon entry. We go, you know what, just wipe now and wipe before you leave, just in case. So it's been working out well. This was since May of last year. And then we saw that that was going okay. We started doing our Pearson view testing. So we've been doing GED testing and stuff all this time. So this is how the getting started with computers came up. When we registered students, especially in August, we were noticing that they were coming, registering, but they weren't attending. It's like, what's the point of registering if you're not gonna attend? Then we found out that it's because they didn't have computers, number one, and when they did have computers, let me close this, it was that they didn't know how to use it. I'm telling you, they were like, they never even knew how to turn it on. So we were like, how do you, if they don't even know how to turn on the computer, how the heck do you teach a class online? They used to be able to open up their Zooms on their phones, but then they were coming complaining that they couldn't see, the phone was too small. So that's why for us, we said, no, we're going to do this in person. I'm going to be honest with you. We had a very hard time getting teachers for it. So guess who did the first sessions in November? I did. 
I did morning and night. I'm the assistant principal, but I'm still a credentialed teacher. So I did the classes. It was, it's three hours, nine to 12 in the morning, 4.30 to 7.30 at night. So we offered it to the students. They have to wear masks and we are doing it in the MPR. Now look at the picture that you see on the screen. Look how much space there is between the students. It's a lot of space. It's the big cafeteria and there's only 15 students in there. So of course it's gonna work out. The desks are spread apart. Now, here's the thing. I do walk around and I go and show them things. I'm wearing my gloves. I change them frequently, like every five minutes or so. I'm changing my gloves because if I go to this guy, I'm, I'm touching, I'm showing him what to do. Obviously, I might take his germs to the other guy when I go. So I change the gloves frequently. And then sometimes I don't wear the gloves, but I have the, the hand sanitizer that I use. So that way I can make sure I'm cleaning as I go. So MPR, 15 students, I have a computer cart in the back. That's where they go grab the computers and use it. We have had since November uh, four sessions. Our next one, because it's so popular, is it's gonna be, it's gonna start on May 15th. And it's only, uh, let me see, five, five times only. So it's Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, and we're done, five times only. The reason I did that was because I wanted to see if I could get like more of the students to stay if they knew it was short term. And yes, they are staying. In the beginning, I might have one student drop out of the 15, but the rest come back, you guys. I think it has a lot to do with it being short term because it's kind of like they see an end in sight. And each class, they know exactly what I'm gonna cover. So they know, oh yeah, this is the Microsoft Word day. This is the PowerPoint day. This is the Excel day. This is the Outlook day. So uh, I'm gonna show you what I do each class session. And so Rosanna, we do have yeah. a couple, couple, Go couple com one comment, one question. Mary said, we issued out many of our devices and then also began a computer basics. Okay. And then Margaret asked, does a laptop battery last? Yes, because we charge them. So when I'm the one who picks them up in the morning, so overnight they had charged. And then what I do is as soon as I'm done, 12 o'clock, the custodian comes, wipes, puts them back in the charger. So yes, they do last. Good question. Thank you. Um, yes. Any others, Holly? You're no, that is it for now. Okay. So the gloves, we have them, but we don't say that they have to wear them. Uh, masks, obviously they do, but the gloves, we make sure we have plenty up on the stage area so that they could pick them up if they want to. They get a wipe at the end. Man, like as they walk in, I check temperature, I give them a wipe just so they could feel better wiping their table, wiping their computer. And then with me, if I can, I have a tutor because it's really hard. Like they need so much help. It's like a, I, my uncle, my uncle was a welder. He never ever in his life touched a computer. He didn't have to. So it's like, I could just imagine telling him all of a sudden you have to learn from home. He would have a hard time. So he would come to a class like this, but you can imagine never ever having used it, double clicked anything before, not knowing what cap lock is, tab is, it's hard for them, right? So that's why what I do is I try to, if it's a big class, like 14, 15 people, and I'm the only person, I try to get either somebody to come with me. Because I had a hard time initially getting teachers to come, I did have college tutors come to help me in the class to circulate and help also. And we do have one new question. Mm -hmm. What kind of wipe for the computer and keyboard? Isn't it bad for the electronics? And also Clorox wipe Clorox wipes aren't allowed in our district, I don't think. Is that an issue for anyone? Um, I don't know if they're Clorox. Honestly, all the wipes are from the district. We have a site that we go and we order the gloves. We order the, even the face shields and stuff. We put it, I use whatever they give us. And that's a good point. Maybe it is bad for the technology, but we use it. You guys, we've been doing this since May. Um, and it's been okay. We haven't had any technology go bad on us, but she does have a good point. Like I don't use the wipes at home, my Clorox wipes on my laptops at home, but here um, it's been okay. So far, so good. Okay. And someone else said we wiped down all of our Chromebooks and laptops with Clorox wipes. Haven't had any problems since August and we have Clorox wipes from the district. So that's it for now. Yeah, Thank That's you. a good point. I don't know if it's Clorox, but they're definitely disinfecting wipes. 
and I'm just using what they gave us. They actually told us, do not buy anything on your own. You must use what we give you. So that's what we're doing. That's from the maintenance department. Question, are there teachers willing to go on site to work with students at your site? Do you guys know? Are, this, are the teachers willing to come back, not come back? Can you guys just kind of share in the chat? I'm just kind of curious. We have a yes, currently no. Um, Sani cloth and we have training to use this product. Some are willing to come back. Yes, yes. Okay. We'll be having this discussion next week. Some, they are nervous and the cleaning is a big issue. We have been working on site since August, small groups, one-on-one, -on -one, all teachers. Teachers are willing, but we have pushback from the union. Mm. A few, including myself, but others still do not want to. No people on campus yet. No, we are currently doing a six week all online computer training class, which has its challenges. Um, waiting till fall, Los Angeles Unified School District is voting district wide this week on whether or not teachers are willing to return without certain conditions in place. We have choice per our agreement to be on campus or not. We're also doing an online computer class just started this week. The union is voting. Um, our teachers just filled out a survey about this. 85% of our teachers said they would return if vaccinated. We are getting our vaccines tomorrow. Okay, so my vaccine, the second one is today. So right after I'm done here, I'm gonna go to Loma Linda and get my second vaccine. But when we started this, we didn't even have the vaccine. It was in November. So I think, yeah, from what I'm hearing, that's that's actually sounds like a lot of people do want to go back. So that's good. So I just barely got a teacher to join me after she got vaccinated. So that way she can learn how to do getting started with computers and take over. So she's going to be with me. She was with me this last time. She felt comfortable enough because she got the vaccine. She said, yeah, I'll come help you. I'll watch you. She's gonna do the next one with me that starts March 15th, cause it's only five sessions. And as of April, she'll take over completely. But yeah, the vaccine helped tremendously in her mind to help herself. Like she wanted to make sure she'll be okay when she comes and works with the students. And when she did come back, she goes, oh my gosh, what a relief because I feel like I'm out of the house finally. Like she just felt like she was back in her element. It was so cute every session she said that. Um, how about students, you guys, because I'm talking to students and they're kind of giving like, I don't know, do you think that the students are going to come back or um, what, what's your like, what, what are you guys hearing from the students? Are they willing to come back? And then also, um, if are they not attending? because of computer issues like the ones I'm describing where they're welders and they're like custodial cleaning housekeeping and they've never really used the computer before. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start reading as they come in. Mm -hmm. Students are nervous to return and waiting for their children to return to school so they can return. Um, Asians, no, and others, yes. The district decides when we return. Our teacher union decides how we return. Our students have mixed feelings. No, they aren't. Students are holding off on registering until we come back. Many said they would not, but this was in January. Only 20% said yes, and the remaining said not yet. Students have been mostly able to come in and participate, but many of them enjoy working from home and then come in when needing support. Some are willing to come back. The older students are hesitant. Our students want to return, but they are nervous. Our teachers want to return, but they're nervous. We have several families who've dealt with COVID in their families, or they are supporting sick family members. My students from older adult programs at SDCCE really like the online format, more accessible to them. Those there are those who do miss the in-person interaction, but there are many that would not return yet until the pandemic is under control. Our members were cut in half, our numbers were cut in half in March of 2020. Students now less than 50% want to continue online. Some probably stayed back, but most of our students are liking the online class and want to continue. They have learned a lot of tech skills, even the older adults. And that's it for now. Got it. So here's how we do the classes. So before they even come in to go in the cafeteria to do any of this, they have to take the CASAS test. 
and they have to do the application. So that we do right off the bat. And then here's what we do in the first session, the application part is already done. But the, basically I talked to them about hardware, software, like um, they don't know what a USB drive is. So this is like our population here. They don't know what that is. Uh, I talked to them about internet safety, digital citizenship. They don't know how to do online searches. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had ESL classes at our local community college, Chafee College. So the counselor who was trying to help them register, she said she couldn't register them online because they didn't know how to go in the search and type www.chafee.edu. She said she had a hard time. So I said, okay, don't worry. I'll make sure in getting started with computers, we're teaching the students how to do those basic search skills. So we do a hundred searches. First, they have to go and type www.barnesandnoble.com, target.com, walmart.com. And then uh, what we do is then do the search key, like where they could go and search and then something comes up and they click on it. So things like that, that we kind of take for granted that we know how to do, we found with our students was an issue. So I cover that on the first day, like the first session. Right clicking, left clicking, uh, they like that's a big deal. They, they're still having a hard time. So the double clicking is a big deal. Like they go click, click, and then by then it's like the, the line becomes blue. I'm telling you the things that we used to take for granted, they were having a lot of trouble with. So we had to practice on the first day 30 times. Click, 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 so that they could learn how to double click. How to like the monitors, where's the on, where's the off? How do you control that? So all those things we had to do on the first day. Uh, question again, do you guys have issues like that? Have you seen students come in or talk to you? Do they know how to double click, right click, left click? Do they know the difference? While they're typing, um, we have had a couple of requests for your PowerPoint. And so I've let them know that they can um, email you and that you will send their power, your PowerPoint to them. And so when you have a chance, if you can either say your email address and I will type it in here, or if you can type it in the chat. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the chat, thank okay. you. Okay, many students actually are using tablets only. And Jill said, we have the same problems. Uh, hold on, the chat's moving very quickly. Many beginning level students have basic computer issues, mouse clicking, and with Chromebooks, they don't know how to use the touchpad. So mouse monitor, monitor don't apply to them. Oh, Laura, Laura, I'm sorry. So Laura had said many students are actually using tablets only. So the mouse and monitor don't apply to them. Okay. And then Kelly, would you be willing to share your five session lesson plan for this class? Definitely. I am. The whole thing I'm willing to share. If it's going to help anybody, I'll just give you the PowerPoints and you do whatever you need to do. You can even change them and make them your own. I'm definitely going to share. And what, so you here's, know what I'm, yes, here's a couple more. Um, yes, SS were computer illiterate. So two years ago, we used ESL computer basic textbooks. We used to do a popular beginning class. The teacher supplemented with PowerPoints. Even when we were in person, many students, older adults had trouble with clicking, double clicking, dragging, cutting, pasting, turning on and off, controlling volume. I've dedicated time to teaching these skills and also continue repeating. We have Chromebooks with a mouse um, I had for another program. There are some websites that had clicking practice. There's, do you want me to, there's two more comments. Um, we have a basic course for ESL in the past and basically continued this in shorter version. So many students do not know how to type. Um, so many students do not know how to type keyboard familiar, et cetera. I taught low level and high level computers for several years before COVID. So we went online mid-March. It worked, but the students had already learned some tech skills. Oh Teachers. my gosh, who's the person who said that they used to teach? See, that's our mistake. We did that's, very little technology. Linda, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Linda Lehman. That's awesome, Linda. Oh my gosh. Like if we knew this was gonna happen, we would have really put this some effort into teaching them these skills. And Beverly said, teachers teach typing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think in the classes, in the ESL classes, they used to do a little bit of typing. They used it as a strategy because they said that some of the students were arriving too late. And so they would have them do like 15 minutes of typing in the beginning. But yeah, that was only in some classes, not all of them. So yeah, this is like the hardware stuff that we teach on the first day. 
uh, parts of a computer. So number lock, backspace, enter, cap lock. That's another thing I noticed was for every time they had to make a capital, like I want to go, they would do cap lock, I, cap lock. So I had to really get them to use shift, what the shift was for, comma, period, add, exclamation. So in the beginning, if you remember, I told you that the persistence, besides the persistence being really strong in the class, like I hardly lost any students in either session. The other thing that was really good was the casas, you guys. So you know how they had to do the casas in the beginning before they came to the class? The rate of people going up uh, like points on casas was uh, like 86%, I think, from the three sessions that I did. The level ups, it's like 65%. Like they actually went up a level because if you add it up, it ends up being like 15 hours, right? Like if it's five sessions, each one is three hours, it ends up being like 15 hours. So I do on the last day, the last hour, I have everybody in the class do the post gases. And then right away I go and I check and see like what the level gains are. 60% right about, the first class was great. It was like 70, but after that, it's been about 60% that they get a level gain. So that's why I think a lot of this vocabulary that you're seeing really helps them. And Rosanna, Beverly asked, do you use a textbook? Nope. I came up with all this. You know how after talking to the teachers, they were like, they don't know how to do this. They don't know how to do that. So that's when I went and then I was like, okay, so if we do five sessions, what can I cover in each one to make sure that all these things that the teachers are saying that the students need are covered. And then also from just our experiences with CASAS, like the things that you guys mentioned in the chat that the students are having a hard time. That's why I put those things like the double clicking and then the shift and the cap lock was because it was all as a result of this. That's why I have no textbook or any I just kind of came up with it based on what we saw was a need so that's a good question Bev okay and then Jill asked is this computer class aligned to co-op uh yeah so here's what happened because I'm I've never taught ESL I used to be a GED teacher like a GED math teacher so what happened was um when the principal and I talked about it she was like you know if you're comfortable we could get an ESL teacher with you once they feel comfortable enough to come and you could you guys could teach and have them do the civics with it so I was like okay so that's something that we're going to work on doing so we can even because you're right this in one of the co-ops I saw everything that we're teaching it's already there so we're going to try to do that. I'm scared because I'm telling you, I've never done civics. I wasn't an ESL teacher, but if I have an ESL teacher come help me, oh my gosh, this will be so great because we can actually even do civics and get some payment points from there. Okay. And then just a couple more. Um, Margaret said, excellent results. Kathleen said, I thought we needed more hours than 15 in between pre and post test. Someone else answered that and said, you need a minimum of 40 hours in between. No, we were told 12. 12 and so the class is 15 so we do the pre and post okay and then someone else said we aligned ours to co-op 73 um well you know what i think for co-ops you have to have 40 or something we're looking into that but no for casas we checked with jay and we wanted to jay wright is our casas person and so he he said yeah as long as it's 12 and more in between you could do the pre and post so that's why we've been doing it and then Victoria would like to know if this was tagged as an ESL class. Uh, no, it's just tagged as a workshop for now, but I'm submitting the, uh, what is it called? It's like this big old thing that you submit. And if it gets approved by our district, then we can call it a class. But I know for that, what we're trying to do is make it where it would be 40 hours. I'm just kind of scared because if we do 40 hours, then I don't know if I'll have the same persistence, you know? I feel like the students are coming, they're staying with me because it's so short. It's like 15 hours. They can invest five days into the class. I'm not sure if we push it to 40, if they will. It's something I have to experiment with because it's so new, you know? Okay, and then another one is, would you be, not your PowerPoint, but would you be able to share your created curriculum with us so we could model our orientation after yours? Yes, absolutely. And like everything I have, like, uh, not just the slides, but even like what I, uh, each class session, how we did it, like what I cover and stuff, I'll send it all over. It's not a problem. 
Okay, and I'm going to pass over just the comments and just go to the questions for you. So are you using the gains just for your information or what program do you align it with? Um, I don't know. That's probably our tech guy. So what I do is um, I we do the CASAS test and then I'm not sure what the tech guy does after that, but um, I just try to track for myself to see how they're doing if they're making gains. And so like the first session, I was so excited because it was like 70% level gains. But then the second one, when it was like 60, the third one was about 60. I was like, oh, but it is what it is. I mean, they're still getting level gains. Um, I'm honestly not sure how that's going to affect us in the long run, especially since it's set up as a workshop. But that's why we're thinking, OK, if this is successful, why don't we try to see if we could do 40? Why don't we try to see if we could do co-ops? So maybe that's something that you could do if I share my stuff with you, if you want to take it, enhance it and stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. OK, and that's it for now. Margaret did post a link for the info on North Star curriculum for learning computers at OTAN in the chat for anyone who's interested. But that's all the questions for now. Thank you. Got it. And we give these tickets out. I, I used to do the same thing in my high school math classes, too. So like to get the students to participate and stuff, I give them tickets. So every time like they're double clicking or I go, where's the shift key? Where's the enter key? Just for answering, I go around and I give them these tickets just to get them motivated. And on the last day of class, I do prizes like school supplies that we have that were donated to us. Uh, so yeah, like just see the uh, questions you see there at button. They would always ask me, where's the at, where's the at? Because like some of you are sharing, if they have like the tablets and the, on the phone, if you notice the at is there, but if they're using a laptop, they don't know where at is. They don't know it's associated with the number two. So it's like things we have to practice, practice, practice. Where's the tab? Where's parentheses? So all those things are on the first day. Every time they answer, I give them a ticket. This is what I do for internet safety. I just go over the things that's there. Uh, I talk about pictures on social media, videos, how to be careful with the types of jokes they're putting, um, how to express themselves properly and not like get into full on arguments and fights over people. Cause I know they're adults, but they sometimes don't know. And so it's our job to tell them um, how to like, you know, just have more digital citizenship online. What kind of pictures they put of themselves and what that would, that might look like for other people. If it's a public account and an employer or potential employer sees it. So I just kind of go over all these very informally with them. I ask them about social media, which ones they use. They, a lot of them have never heard of LinkedIn before, but they have definitely heard of Facebook. I even ran some statistics. So 76% of them even had Facebook, but only like 12 or 13% had Twitter. A lot of them are not on Twitter or any of the other sites. Um, so one of the big problems we had was the teacher said that when they're learning online, they tend to quit because they don't have a proper workstation. They do it in the dining room and there are lots of people in the house who are talking and distracting them. So I just show them an example. I go, look, look at that desk. It's not even like a fancy schmancy. It's just a normal wooden desk. You don't need fancy equipment. You just need a quiet area to study. Another example, I just go over these so that they know because a lot of times they don't know. Another, I go look at how organized the desk is. That way they could easily find everything. They have a small lamp, they have pencils. And then I tell them to get a USB drive. So I we have USB drives for them so that they could get used to learning how to save on there, on there but we let them borrow. On the last day of class, I pick it back up and then we clean the memories on, off of them. But um, a lot of like it's 50 50 50 percent of them actually do go and purchase their own USB drive because we do a lot in the subsequent uh, sessions that they could save on there. I let them know how it's only five classes, therefore they have to attend uh, and they do. And I tell them that they're going to learn a lot. Uh, I did have two people cry. I'm going to be honest with you. They're older ladies. Um, one of them said that she had worked in like retail types of places all her life, so she didn't know how to use a computer at all. So just from the frustration, she cried. Another lady cried. She left, but, and then she came back the next class. I mean, it's just growing pains. I'm just really glad that they stuck with it, you know, despite what they Rosanna, were Yes, ma'am. We do have a couple questions. Um, mm -hmm. Laura asked, instead of USB drives, have you considered teaching about cloud storage like Google Drive? 
we don't use Google or uh, that's the problem. Our district, we don't use Google like hardly at all. I wish we did because I use Google at home and I love it. But because here we don't, and then it's the cloud and I'm not too used to that. I just tell them how, like I show them my USB and I, how I have like a lot of things save on, saved on it. And then, so yeah, that's why I, I teach them to get the USB. Okay. And then Margaret said, good persistence. Shelly said, what is the lowest ESL level that can successfully take this class? And good. Natalie has the same question as that. Yeah, they are level two. So they speak absolutely no English. But what I do is I still speak like I'm Armenian. I don't speak Spanish very well. I do speak some. I understand it really well. So I help them, but all in English. And I think I really think this is why they get level gains because I keep it so English. So think about it, three hours of English, 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 you know, and then so sometimes there's things they don't know. And then I just go and I point it and I show it like realia. You know how they tell us when you're teaching in a class, you have ELD kids, you have to use realia. So I think that's one of the things that helps them. Okay. Um, this is the how to log into our computers because you know how it's laptops they're using. So this is what I give them. But if you were to use this, you, you know, have to show how they would do in your class. Uh, this was a big deal. The teacher said that they need to know how to go on the district website. A lot of them don't know how to get on. A lot of them don't know how to find their schools. Our district is composed of 45 schools. They're building number 46 up in uh, North Fontana. So we go over them. We like focus on their kids' school. They go, they need to see how to find teachers and how to email them. So this takes place in session one. And then we go into emailing. So the whole first session, besides being able to do the very basics of computers, we spend a lot of time emailing. Now look at the sample, see the spacing? They don't know how to do that. So this is really good practice. We get in, they have to like capitalization, how to write dear, blah, blah, how to put a dot at the end of Mrs., at the end of Mr., how to put a comma or a colon at the end of the name. Uh, at the end, some, sometimes they have a tendency to put like, let's say they're putting their name, like Maria Jameson, right? They would put a period and I go, no, no, you don't have to put a period. It's not necessary, but they learn how to do a proper email format. The reason I did this is because again, the teacher said they're sending us emails and they're putting a whole paragraph in the subject line. We don't know what they're trying to say. So that's why I was like, OK, let's help them. Let's help them write this because this is a great career um, college career skill that they're they could learn. Uh, Gossas packets. I have four Gossas packets that I give them to take home each of the first four sessions. They're like 50, 60 questions each and they're practice questions. So it's just like that. We took them from the Gossas website. So we made these packets that they get to take home and they do it and they're supposed to bring it back the next session. When they bring it back, we grade it and then we return it the, the one after so that they could see their mistakes. I don't know if this has also contributed to the level gains. I honestly don't know, but I do give them the, these packets to do. We play Kahoot on the first day just so they could uh, like uh, practice the parts of a computer. And I didn't create it. I just went and put parts of a computer. I found this great Kahoot and we play it there. Okay, uh, any, are we okay? Can I move on? Any questions, comments up to? We just have a couple comments. And if you would like, rather than take the time to read them all, I can download the chat and send it to you afterwards. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. As long as it's nothing pressing that I need to and, and as long as the participants know, if I have missed a question you have asked, or if there is something that you, a comment that you made that you want read to her, please feel free to retype it. Sometimes the chat moves really quick and I may miss it. A question did just come in. Mm -hmm. How did you provide the CASAS packets to students just when they came to the orientation? No, the CASAS packets, there's four of them. So what I do is uh, the first day before they leave the first session, I give them all a packet. I send it to the district, they print it. It's kind of thick because it's quite a few questions. So then I just, we print them and then I give it to them and then they take it and then they have to bring it back. Uh, to be honest with you, like 50% do it. They don't all do it, but you know what? 50% is 50%. Sometimes they even ask questions. They go, well, how come this question I couldn't understand? And that's the part I love because then I'm actually going over a question 
and I like Casa's questions because I feel like they're like real life scenarios and stuff. So if they're asking a question, I go, okay, this is probably something that they need to know, a life skill that they didn't know previously. I realize they don't know North, East, West. You know how it's never, ever eat um, watermelon, whatever. They didn't know. And that's one of the questions on Casa's. So an overwhelming majority, when I asked the question, they didn't know how to read the maps that are on the CASAS test. And so I was like, oh, this is great because now I could go over it with them. Okay. So another thing I do, I'm willing to share these. We went, okay, so you know how I'm giving them the packet, right? They take it home, they do it, they bring it back. After the 20th packet, I gave them all to one of the ladies in the office. I said, can you go and tally? which questions they are missing the most. We found out reading maps is a big problem with our students. Reading, like when you go to like the YMCA and they have a sign on the door, this session, this room at this time, that session, this room, this time. Our students had a hard time reading those. So what we did was we strategically came up with questions. It's like 10 questions and they're just PowerPoints. There's four of them. Every class session, besides the packets that they're going to take home and do, I do this as a whole class. I put it up. I go, okay, what do you think the answer is? They read and they argue. They argue over, no, it should be B. No, it should be A. And it's such good conversations. And what I do is I just walk around just for participating. I give them those ticket thingies. But yeah, the, I think that also is what's helped a lot with the Gosses games. Because I'm actually, it's not, it, all of a sudden it becomes not just a computer class, but it's like learning life skills, Gosses stuff, you know? Okay, so we create a document together. Now this is like the second session already. Google images, they have to learn how to save them and then how to put them on, how to insert into their Word documents. So we do a Word document all together and then they go and then they have to do a couple on their own. And the entire time I'm walking and helping them while they do this. Okay. So uh, I send them an email just to gauge and see like this is a good skill for them. They have to be able to go into their Outlook. They have to be able to open the email. They have to be able to respond in full sentences and then they have to be able to send it back. So this is like an email thing that we do a practice and the questions. I just try to see who my students are, you know, like what what they do, what they know kind of a thing. So this is like an email format I use. Uh, they do. So the second session is very heavy on Microsoft Word because our teachers use Microsoft Word and they said that they want the students to know how to use it when they go in. We do a letter of introduction. Look at what you see, you guys. They have to do all this. Look at the double, the, the, just the title. The title is bold, that's a skill. Look at the underline, it's double lined. Do they know how to do that? So we do that together. Look at the table, the color of the table, the centering of the titles of the table. All those that you see on this, they learn on their own, italicizing how to use the picture thingy to do the scribble and to write their name. So this one is like one of my favorite things that they do because it's like, it, this is teaching them a lot of computer skills, word skills in one document. Anything you guys wanna add before I go to the next one? Any questions? Um, we have, this is impressive. And then we have, did you have to help them establish an email account? If so, which one? Uh, our district, because we don't use Google, unfortunately, it's Microsoft Outlook. So they have to learn to be able to go in their student accounts and that we do on the first day. So after that, like, and then that's why on the first day I spend so much time emailing back and forth, back and forth. They have to keep emailing me questions, answers and stuff. And so that way they could learn how to get in and use it. And it's assigned by the district. So all of their ID numbers become like their uh, emails. So if it's 214868, then it's 214868 at students.fusd.net. So that's what we do. It's like the district assigns them. That's all the questions for now. Okay. Okay, so this is questions again for you. Do your students know how to email? Do they know how to save documents? Do they know what a USB drive is? Do they know how to email to multiple parties? So if you can please help me out, you guys. So can you give me some feedback? How are your students doing like with these things that you see here? And while we wait for those to come in, one question did just come in. Do you show them how to create a personal email? 
No. Okay. Thank you. Um, you know why? It's because yeah. it's blocked. Gmail, Yahoo, it's blocked. So like they can't, we can't even access it. Let's say I have a Yahoo account and I want to get in from our district, even us like staff, we can't get in. So that's kind of why I have to show it to them on their phone. And I'm too scared to do that because then I have to touch their phone and I just don't want to mess with it. What if I press something I'm not supposed to? So one person says, I don't know if they know how to do that. Um, one, it depends on the level beginning, no advance. Yes. Mm. And then we have a no sort of no. Um, they know how to email one person, not multiple. They also know how to take pictures and attach them in an email. Okay. Most of our students know how to email, but not all know how to use CC or BCC or to attach documents or pictures. Most of our students do. Yes on email, no and no on the others. It's a huge mix at our school. Mm. Most know how to email and save docs. Only a few can email to multiple parties. Got it. Okay, so see something like this then would be really great for your students. This is good. This is helping me. Okay, so th this is a good thing. So then they turn in their CASAS packet at the end of the second session. Like I said, I bring it and then I just grade it. So that way I could give it back the next session and they could see what they missed. So see, again, they're getting two CASAS. It's not just the packet that they home to do on their own, but it's also the questions that we go over as a class, which are different. So then they come in for the third day, we do a food list together. Uh, so basically what I do, this is what I used to do in my math class all the time. I always go back and review for my warm up what we did the previous day, just to kind of refresh their memories. That's why even though the third day is really more PowerPoint oriented, I still do a Word document because I wanna make sure they could remember. Look at this, you guys, the, the title where it says food list. That is a bigger font. So I do that so that they could learn to use a bigger font. All the tabs, the different kinds of uh, bullets, they learn just from this one document. So this is something that I cover and I have the word format. When I send it to you, if you want it, you could change it any way you want. I have to be honest, this takes a long time, this particular one, because it's not that easy to manipulate bullets, especially for very beginning students, students who have not like used computers before. But I, I go, no, they're going to do it. And they do. It just takes time. It takes a good 45, 50 minutes for all those 14, 15 students to finish that one document. And then we do calendaring too. So now that they know how to get into their student account, they're more familiar with email by now. I go, okay, I'm going to show them how to calendar just for the heck of it so that they know it's a good skill. At the very least, they could put it on a job application that they know how to use Outlook, they know how to calendar, right? So we do an upcoming holiday. We do it where they have to like plan a party and then they have to send it, invite the teacher. So not, not only is it something that they're putting on their calendar, but they're also inviting somebody. So we did spring break, for example, because here's what's interesting about spring break. It's a whole week. Do they know how to put a star? Do they know how to put an end? So that's why we go over this with them in the third one. Teams, our district, I wish we could use Google Classroom, but we don't. Our district uses Teams. I'm not a fan of Teams, but we that's what they encourage us to use. So we have to make sure that the students know how to use it. So that's why um, I make sure I go over Teams. I put an assignment in there that they have to open, they have to do, they have to reattach, they have to submit to the teacher just so they get the hang of it. Do you guys use Teams, by the way? Can you guys like do a thumbs up or something? I just want to see if your school is doing Teams or Google or something. I'm just trying to gauge. In the chat we have, we use Google Drive. We use Google everything, Google Drive, Google. Lucky. Google, Google everything, Google Drive. Nice. Teams is available. Mm. Yeah, see, ours is different. We have to use Teams for um, like everything. They use Google Sites and Canvas. And yeah, they're just. Our ESL uses Canvas. There was one comment from Mary. I just wanted to read you really quick. I teach ABE, ASE, and my ABE students or my mature students struggle with so much of what you have covered. General keyboarding awareness. We use Google, so that helps them. Oh, nice. Um, do they know how to do bullets, you guys, from your, like, just dealing with the students? 
because uh, I know somebody said that you, they know how to do pictures, they know how to take a picture, upload it. That's that's awesome because our students were having a hard time with that. Do they know how to do bullets, templates? Do they know how to use Microsoft Word templates? No, I had to teach student to save when we started teaching MS Office, not an issue with Google. Uh, Jill says no to all of those questions. Okay, got it. Okay, so then uh, this is where we go. This is still the third session. We go into PowerPoint and how appropriate. I just thought, okay, since it's COVID time, we're all concerned about getting sick. Why don't we do a PowerPoint on healthy tips? So they have to make a 10 slide PowerPoint. I help them with each one. And then they have to go on Google and they, because we do use Google for searches, they find a picture. So like one of the slides is uh, because of for health reasons, I'm going to drink less soda. That's one of the slides. So then they have to go find a picture of drinking soda, put it. Here's the best part. The last slide, slide number 10 is references. So they have to go copy where they got it from and put it in the references. Because I thought that this might be good for them to teach their kids too. the whole concept of plagiarizing and stuff how you're not supposed to just go pull images without putting like where it came from and stuff. So on the last slide, they have to go every time and put put the link like where they got it from copying, pasting, copying, pasting. And then they save it and look at that they have to send it to all these people. So initially I said send it to three people, then I put five. So it's a good practice for them. Do they know after they do the PowerPoint how to attach it and how to send it to multiple people? So these are our, mostly our college tutors. Like the first email is mine and then it's our receptionist. The last one is a teacher and the second two, I put those on purpose because see if they put mine, they might be able to find me because we're all connected through the district by my name. But do they know how to type a complete email address if it's not a district one, if it is Yahoo, if it is Gmail? So that's why I purposely put this on there. Sorry, I think I skipped something. Okay. We go on the Fontana Unified, um, the Fontana Adult School website. Um, I think this is like going into the fourth session already. They have to go in the resources page. They have to download the newsletter. So uh, jobs, I have like on our website, it's called job sources. So they have to go on there and see how to apply, like just to be able to open it so that if they know people who need jobs, they can at least refer them to the site. This is the fourth session. And this is my absolute favorite because I love Excel. So they learn how to do Excel because by now, and think about it, they've already been in the class like nine hours, 10 hours. So by now they're like pretty used to the email and stuff. And so it's a good time to show them. They are so thrilled with the, the whole thing with Excel, um, alphabetizing. They love it. So one of the things we do is we create a column, first name, last name, and then they just learn how to alphabetize and that makes their day. And then I show them how they could put the birthday. So I go, you could use this in your life. You could put everybody in your family, put their name, put the birthday. That way, if when their birthday comes, you know what to do. You could just wish them a birthday. This is something we create together. Like, it's just so easy. Look, it's just monthly expenses. And we have a whole discussion about this. Like to live in Fontana, how much is rent? How much is insurance? How much is utility? So it's very easy, nothing too fancy because it's just a beginner class but they come up with it. And then at the end, they have to save it and they send it to themselves. We have a couple comments for you. Yes. Very robust for such a short term. Wow, you cover a lot of MS programs. And Beverly says, can I take your class? I don't know Excel well. Oh yeah, it's very basic though. Nothing like too fancy. It's just like little things that I know. And by the way, I'm not a techie person. I'm very uncomfortable. It takes me a while to learn. It's just that there was such a need, like when we had students wanting to sign up, but like, I can't use a computer. I don't know how to turn on a computer. It was such a need. That's why we did this. So then uh, this is the Excel. Oh, this is also one of my favorites, but this, but none of this is done on their own. You guys, step by step, we do together. We create this. So we go in, we put the months, the high temperatures, the low temperatures, we go to insert and we insert a graph. This is average temperatures, cold and hot in the city of Ontario, which is like right next door to us here in Fontana. 
Okay, and then that covers Excel. And then the last class, you know what I do? Basically, whatever we we like couldn't get to, um, I put on the last day. So uh, usually it ends up being like a Word document that I tried to do that there was no time to do. So ideas for parents, like how to be good parents, some, you know, like tricks and tips, uh, they usually do that. They email, it kind of becomes like a cumulative assignment. It takes about an hour and a half. So it's a three hour last session. An hour and a half goes to doing some kind of a cumulative thing, either on PowerPoint or Word that they have to email. And I use the rest of the time for the CASAS post-test. And this is the document that they do. See, they have to put a border, they have to put a picture. Okay. So the level gains, that's what I was talking about. Not only do we review in class, but we also do it as homework. And then this was my results, like the February one. I don't know, because we started in February, but we just finished yesterday. Uh, because you know how in February we had those Mondays off and because the class is Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, we missed some Mondays. So we just finished yesterday. Yesterday was Wednesday. I'm not sure how the level gains will look, but yeah, hopefully they were good. I'm going to see <laughs> what happened. Um, and then obviously for them, every class, every like little thing they learn, I remind them they can put this on a resume. I go, you guys, now you can't say you've never used PowerPoint. You can't say you've never used Excel. These are skills that you can take with you. Now, a big question comes up. They always ask, can I repeat the class? And I say, yes, if there's room, you can repeat the class. About 40, 30, 40%, like a third of them do. They do take the class again because they go, I learned a lot, but like somebody was mentioning, it's a lot. So they want to take it one more time so that they can kind of perfect those skills. It helps them build confidence. So especially teams, when we use teams, they go, oh my God, my student, my kid has to use this all day. This is so hard. They have to do this. I go, yes, now you know how your kids feel. They have to be able to download the assignment, type it in, upload it. And God forbid they forget to say turn in. It's not going to go through. That happened with my own kid, my teenager. He's 13. And a couple of times he's forgotten to turn in. And then like it's a missing assignment. Then I go on a you know, big screaming match with him. So, yeah. We do have a question from Shelly. It says, is this class only open to students enrolled or planning to enroll in other programs in your school? It's open to anybody in the community, especially because we're CASAS testing them. It's OK. They become our student. You know how we actually started it? We advertised to our schools. So we sent the flyer and like the breakdown, what each class is gonna cover to all the principals and the community aides, the secretaries, and then they started getting the word out to the parents in the community. We told our students too, but I think because like, especially our ESL students, they're the ones who wanna take the class, but our ESLs tend to fall on Mondays, Wednesdays too. So a lot of them have like been wanting to do this and couldn't. So the ones we're going to do in April and May are going to be on Tuesday, Thursday, just to open the opportunity for them to take it because they haven't been able to all this time. So yeah, the students are going to be happy. The obviously, you know, the more students take the class, the better. It's going to help them with tech skills. Now we do have, this is only like a five session introductory, right? That's why it's called getting started with computers. We do have three levels of computers that are semester long. We have beginner level, intermediate and advanced level, but those are all online done with teachers. But this is like a class specifically for the very beginning level students, students who haven't touched computers and stuff before so that they could feel comfortable enough to take those semester long classes and be able to complete it successfully. And All a, right. question, a yes. question just came through. How many are ESL, ASE, ABE, or CTE students? My majority are ESL. Uh, so I would say 70, like seven out of 10 are ESL and then two ABE, uh, only very few are HSE, ASE. I think because ASE, HSC, they, they're more comfortable using the computer. It's kind of like, you know how somebody mentioned that their advanced students seem to like kind of know how to use computers more. I, we kind of see the same with our HSC, ASC students. So majority are ESL, 
and then with some ABE. Okay, and then are students given a pretest prior to the class? Yes, they have to pretest prior to coming. Um, this last session, I did have two students who, because they signed up so late, we didn't have a GASA state for them. But like, like basically what I told them was, go take the test right now, come back. That way you don't miss a lot. So by the time they went and came back, I was done with like the digital citizenship and stuff. So that's the part they missed. Okay, and then for your semester long classes, did you create the curriculum for those two or did you use an existing curriculum? Those are done, no, they were there from like a while back. It's just that the difference was before they were taught here on campus and we had two levels. Now we have three levels. But the teacher said that a lot of what they do, like in the beginning class, that semester long is Word. They put a lot of emphasis on Microsoft Word. But when then when they go to intermediate, that's when it's a little bit more like PowerPoint also, more heavier features on Word. And then the advanced level, it's like a lot of Excel. But what's nice is in this one, it's like they get a little bit of an intro so that when they take the class, they're not like stuck not knowing anything. Okay, and the next question, is the pretest remotely? No, we do it here. We have, um, like I was saying in the beginning, we do, we have it's room one. Our room one is a lab. It's really big. It could take up to 48 students, but we only test 14 at a time because of spacing. We have to make sure it's spaced. All the windows are open, which by the way, is also the case with the NPR. Uh, we have three doors. All three are open because air has to circulate. And so then we do the same thing in room one. It's been kind of cold in the winter. Fontana gets really bad winds, but we tell the students, sorry, this is like how we got permission to do this in the first place. So no, they do it here on campus. Okay, and I just put the link in the chat for everyone to fill out your evaluation. Okay. But that's the that's last good. question for now. Yeah, and that's the email address. I'm basically done, you guys. That's the email. Um, I'll send you everything I have. I have no problem doing it. Uh, it's just, yeah, I kind of had to create this based on what we heard from teachers was an issue. What we heard from students saying, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. That's how we came up with this.